Well, we certainly welcome you all tonight in the name of the Lord. It is good and pleasant for brethren to dwell together in unity, isn't it? Yes. Welcome those on live stream also. This will be our 13th message on the New Covenant. Uh, it's very important to me that we all understand the New Covenant as, as much as possible. And I don't think that anyone really comprehends it in its fullness yet and will not probably do so as long as we're in the world. That's why there's words like abundant and plenty and never failing and associated with the blessings of God. Now, some essential things to remember about the New Covenant. The New Covenant is a different kind of covenant. It's not a way of life or a system of law or a network of guidelines. The New Covenant He has promises that are of a different order. There are different kind of promises that were under the law. Take all the promises that were given to Israel, all of them were temporal. All of them were. So there's different kind of promises under the new covenant. There's a different kind of a high priest. High priest, we are our high priest is in heaven forever. And he's received all power in heaven and earth. Yeah. And if he wasn't in heaven, you couldn't go there. Yeah. But he is in heaven, so you can go Amen. there. Amen. We have a different kind of mediator. Moses stood between God and the people to keep the wrath from coming on the people. Jesus is a different kind of mediator. He's standing between the people and God, so God's blessings can get to the people. See, it's a different, it's a different kind of covenant. Yeah. And it has different kind of priests. The priests under the new covenant are kings and priests. It's a different kind of priest. And we're going to deal with tonight is our different kind of results. Now, we have a right to expect the results of the new covenant to be found among us. And among, any, among anyone that professes to be of Christ. I will only speak for myself here. I cannot accept without some kind of qualification any person is a Christian whose life is at variance with what God said he'd do in the new covenant. Some, some evidence of that has to be. It's not going to be, I understand that we grow in it. I understand that, but some evidence has to be there. Yes, amen. Now let's look under the Old Covenant first of all. The blessings of the Old Covenant were all conditional. Mm -hmm. They were a peculiar people if. Here's the statement, Exodus 19, 5. Now therefore, if, ye, if, 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 you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant. Then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people. For all the earth is mine. Now, this is not the man of the new covenant. That's right. You're made accepted in Christ in the new covenant. Amen. The new covenant, your acceptance is not based on what you do. It's based on who you have faith in. It's a big <laughs> It, in fact, the, the first covenant didn't even require faith. That's right. yep. It didn't require faith. In fact, it did, faith didn't fit into that whole system. The law is not of faith, Amen. Galatians 3.12. Uh -huh. So the law had nothing to do with faith. The old covenant had nothing to do with faith, nothing at all mm -hmm. to do with faith. In, from Exodus 19.5, through Deuteronomy 28.15, which is Deuteronomy is a rep repeating of the covenant. 
The word if is mentioned 77 times in those texts. It's all over the place. If you think it's mentioned a lot in the New Testament scriptures, it's nothing compared to what it's mentioned in the others. Now, the, the covenant came through Moses, but the people weren't sanctified by Moses. See, it's a different, different kind of covenant now. See, Moses, he was, he was a faithful in all God's house. He interceded for the people, but he couldn't make him acceptable. See? It's a different kind of covenant. He mediated a different kind of covenant. Under the old covenant, the people weren't changed. I will even go so far as to say they weren't intended to be changed. So here's some statements made while they were under the covenant. Exodus 32, 9, the Lord said unto Moses, I have seen this people. This is after the law had been given, huh? After they'd seen the glory. And behold, it's a stiff-necked people. This after they were delivered, right? After they went through the Red Sea, right? After they ate the manna. It's a stiff-necked people. Yes, amen. Yeah, they weren't changed. Exodus 33, 5. For the Lord has said unto Moses, Say to the children of Israel, Ye are stiff-necked people. Tell them. Tell them. Now, brethren, stiff-necked people need to be told what they are. That's right. it was, I, I understand this would stir up a lot of trouble. I mean, I understand this. But when people are unacceptable, they are, have a condition that's unacceptable to God, they've got to be told this. Yes. And if they accept it, then we can hold out some grace to them that... This thing can be corrected, but you will not be accepted in this condition. Yes, Jesus didn't die for sin so people could keep on living in it. Right. Thank God for remission and cleansing. Deuteronomy 9, 7, remember and forget not. This is just before Moses died at the border of the promised land. Remember. Forget not how thou provokest the Lord thy God to wrath in the wilderness from the day that thou didst depart out of the land of Egypt until ye came to this place. Ye have been a rebellious people against the Lord. See, the law didn't change the people. That's, that's, right. that's the point. I'm, it, was a, it was a legitimate covenant. It was a real covenant, but it did not change the people. God announced to the people long, hundreds of years after the law had been given. He said uh, to Isaiah 55, 8, My thoughts are not your thoughts. That's after hundreds of years of dealing with Israel. He said to them, My thoughts are not your thoughts, neither are your ways my ways, saith the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways and my thoughts and your thoughts. Now, you might try and change that condition by some form of regimentation. It will not change it. Amen. All the Proverbs won't change it. You can read them till the day you die and fill your mind with the Proverbs, and they will not change you. They didn't even change Solomon. Amen. He was one of the worst of all people. Mm -hmm. Solomon was. Yeah, yeah. Built places for idols, married idolatrous women, yeah. so provoked God, God rent the kingdom from him. He was angry with him because he appeared to him twice. Yeah. See, with all that wisdom he had, mm -hmm. it didn't change him. Yeah. Well, you've got to see that. Yeah. I've told you before that I never heard so many sermons on Proverbs so we moved here. My goodness, you'd have thought <laughs> you'd have thought this was the heart of the Bible. There's hardly any proverb written that a child can't understand. And you very rarely read a proverb that when you read it you didn't know it already. Very rarely. I'm not denigrating Solomon. God raised up Solomon to show this. That's right. yeah. 
He gave Solomon all the wisdom you could possibly get mm -hmm. in the earth. Yeah. And, it, and then he was under the old covenant too. Uh -huh. And it did not change anybody. There was no, under the old covenant, there was not an effective dealing with sin. Sin was never really dealt with. There were, there were chastenings and punishments and things like this, but sin itself was never really dealt with. Let's just take a glimpse of, from Hebrews 10 about a snapshot view of the Day of Atonement, which was the highest day, when the, high, the one time in the year the high priest could go in into the holiest of all and stand before God with blood for the people, for the sins of the people. Here's what it says about that. Hebrews 10.1, the law having a shadow of good things to come and not the very image of things can never, with those sacrifices which they offered year by year continually, make the comers therein too perfect. For then would they not have ceased to be offered? I mean, if their heart was cleansed, there's no further need for a sacrifice. Right. But those sacrifices couldn't cleanse the conscience. It could not make people comfortable in the presence of God. Amen. Because the worshippers once purged would have no more conscience of sins. Uh, there's a lot of people that don't know this. I won't, I won't prognosticate why they don't know it. But there's people that don't know that when your conscience, when you're forgiven of your sin, your conscience doesn't bother you anymore about those sins. Yeah. Now there's, I don't know, I, I haven't heard many people preach this, but it, it could really do, good, do to be preached. Yeah. That once you're cleansed from sin, you have no more consciousness. He purges your conscience from dead works. Yeah. So you can serve the living God. Right. See, but none of that was under the old covenant. Was not under there at all. There, in fact, when they offered the sacrifices on the Day of Atonement, this high day, instead of it provoking thankfulness for forgiveness, mm -hmm. it provoked a remembrance yes. of sin. Yeah. <laughs> mm -hmm. How's that for a different covenant? Yeah. Uh -huh. This isn't why we sit at this table. This is the new covenant. This is the new covenant in my blood, Jesus said. Yeah, right. We don't meet to remember that we've sinned. Yeah. Yeah. We meet to remember we've been cleansed from our sin, yeah. forgiven of our sin, justified from all things in which you could not be justified under the law of Moses, yes. so that it can be shouted into the devil's ear, who is he that condemns? Yes. It is God that is justified, see? None of that was under the law. Moses didn't have it. The prophets didn't have it. Isaiah didn't have it. None of them had it. Yeah. Not because of any deficiency on their part, uh -huh. but because God hadn't instituted the new. Yes. He, first of all, instituted the old uh -huh. to convince men that they needed something new. Amen. No effect of dealing with sin. Now... <laughs> A psychological approach to sin is actually after the old covenant order. Yeah. Uh -huh. Trying to get people to control their lives and, you know, that sort of thing. That's after, that's what the old, this is what the old covenant did. Uh -huh. Except it went about it a bit more zealously. Yeah. Uh -huh. If you didn't do what they said, you were killed. Yeah. The soul of sin has died. Yeah. See, the, it still couldn't address the situation. Right. You could just threaten to put them to death if they do it again. It doesn't. We need a better covenant. Yeah, yeah. And as I have said, a psychological approach to sin, where you teach men to regulate in their lives and so forth, this is of the old covenant order. This is exactly what the old covenant did is what it demanded, but it didn't change anybody, not even one person, not one person in 1,500 years of law, not one person was justified. 
Not one person was forgiven. Not one person was cleansed. Not one person was acceptable before God on a like eternal type basis. Now let's look at the, so the, but the results are quite, quite a bit different. The results of the law were summed up this way, condemnation. <laughs> that's, what, <clears throat> that's what the law did. If you took it seriously, it condemned you. You were not allowed a mistake. That's right. See? People are tolerant. They'll allow for mistakes. And a matter of fact, just as person to person, we do that. We don't, you know, we understand people blunder once in a while. We've I've blundered ourselves. But the law didn't 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 allow for you to blunder. <laughs> if you made a mistake, if you made a mistake, it didn't involve say taking someone's life or something. You had to divvy up like six or five, four times more, five, seven times more than you took. You know what? You had you had a penalty to pay. New covenant's not that kind of covenant. It's a different kind of covenant. Sin had to be paid for. Now make no mistake about this. Sin had to be paid for. Now enters Jesus into the scenario. He's the one that paid for sin. What God would have done to the human race, he did to Jesus. Now let's look at a, a skeletal outline of the results of the new covenant. The new covenant stated in Hebrews 8, 10 through 13. You should be familiar with that. This is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days. Someone said, there it is, the house of Israel. Well, we go down to the rest of the end of the chapter, and this is the covenant Jesus is mediating. Yeah. I will put my laws into their mind. He didn't say, I can. Amen. Yeah. And write them in their hearts. I will be to them a God. They shall be to me a people. This is the new covenant now. This is what this is what's the results of the new covenant. They shall not teach every man his neighbor and every man his brother, say, Know the Lord, that they shall all know me, from the least to the greatest, for I will be merciful to their unrighteousnesses and their sins and their iniquities, iniquities will I remember no more. Now if you read the history of Israel, he remembered their sin all through. Yeah. Hundreds of years after Sinai. Jesus threw their disobedience at sign. They threw it in their face. He kept bringing up, all through the history, he kept bringing up the sins they sinned in the wilderness and at Sinai. He kept bringing it up. Every time they killed a prophet, hundreds of years later, he'd bring it up again. See? Yeah. Uh -huh. That was the old covenant. This doesn't happen under the new covenant. Yeah, right. The person comes into Christ, he doesn't say, you did this and you did that. And Believe me, when people give their testimony, it's just my personal opinion. Don't tell us what you were. Tell us what you are. If Jesus has erased the past, you got no right to bring it up. I mean, you may be generalized. Yeah, I was a persecutor of the church. Paul made general, but it wasn't lengthy. <laughs> Now, let's look at these things. I will put my laws in their, in their mind. <clears throat> I will put my laws in their mind. That is, their thoughts will be in sync and revolve around God's laws. Amen. He doesn't mean without knowing them, you suddenly be able to quote, you know, the book of Exodus. That's not what he's talking about. He's talking about there's an agreement within the person with whatever God says there's an agreement with it, even whether it's understood or not. He said, now this is something God does. This isn't, yeah. you don't educate people into this. This is what God does. This is the new covenant. We're talking about the results of the new covenant. I will write my laws in their hearts. <clears throat> this has to do with affection and preference. Yeah. See, yeah. when the laws have got are written in your heart, you prefer them. You love them. Oh, I love by thy law. See, he said, I'll put that in your heart, I'll, in your mind. You'll think in accord with my laws. You'll recognize the truth of my laws. I'll put them in your heart. You'll love them. You'll prefer them, see? 
This, this is the result now of the new covenant. So if you come across a people that they can't stand God's word, they need to be saved. Amen. This is what's needed. And th there is a salvation, you know. We got a salvation to announce. Yeah, I will be to them a God. That is, they will worship and serve me. He was Israel's God by declaration. But they served other gods. But the new covenant, this is not what happens. Amen. In the new covenant, the people choose God and serve him willingly and gladly. Amen. And I will be and they shall be to me a people. That is, I will bless them and I'll benefit them. They'll all know me. As they'll be acquainted with me. You remember in the Job there it says, Acquaint thyself with him and be at peace. Know me means acquainted with me, like a husband knows a wife, or a wife, a mother and father know their children. See, they, they'll all know me. Nobody in the new covenant is unacquainted with God. I understand they're not thoroughly, but they can, can kind of sense the truth of God. And sometimes it takes a while before it, it sinks in, but you're not fighting. Israel would fight against what God said. But the new covenant, people don't fight against it. They say they want, they want to understand it. They want to press it into it, see? Why? Because they know God. They want to be where God is. That's God's people. This is what happens in the new covenant. You, you kind of gravitate to where God is. The Ethiopian eunuch... He was just learning, but he wanted to go to Jerusalem. <laughs> That's what we want to go to, the new Jerusalem. Yes, want to go there. And I'll be merciful to their unrighteousnesses. That doesn't mean like I'll, I'll pretend like they weren't there. It means he'll change, he'll change the person's nature. So the unrighteousnesses that they committed will now be against their nature. Yeah. That's, a, that's the reason they don't do them anymore. That's, right. that's why they don't do them anymore. It's against their nature. God gives them a new nature. He recreates them, see? Their sins and iniquities will I remember no more. The reason is he put them away. And listen to me, sins that are put away have no power. Amen. A person who's been forgiven sin, that sin has no more power. Now, there's a lot, of, a lot of things that contradicts, I understand, but so be it. That it contradicted. If your sins can never be forgiven, they'll lose their power. Just as surely as a lame man, when he was healed, he could pick up his bed and walk. Man with a withered hand was healed, he could lift up his hand. Man who was blind and was healed, he could see. And the person who's been forgiven sin, sin has no more power over him, just like lameness had no more power and blindness had no more power. See, yeah. leprosy had no more power. Amen. Death had no more power. See, when sins are forgiven, sin loses its power. Yes. No wonder Jesus said, be of good cheer. Thy sins be forgiven thee. All right, that's kind of a skeleton outline of the results of the new covenant now let's go into a little more in detail these are not goals now yeah. under the law it was like a goal mm -hmm. thou shalt not yeah. thou shalt see <laughs> it was something to be for you to fulfill but these are not goals and requirements these are something that's that are that are done they're done because of christ See, God, God does all of this not because he thinks so highly of you. He thinks highly of you because you're in Christ. Right. Because you think highly of Jesus, God thinks highly of you. Jesus said to his apostles, he said, The Father loves you because you love me right. and believe I came out from God. That's the way it works in the new covenant. Thank God. That brings the thing down to us. We can get hold of this now. If it's based upon us, ourselves, and our own achievement, we can tell you, born again or not, we can't, it can't, we can't come on to God on that basis. It's so it's by faith in Christ, 
that all of this is unlocked. So let's, let's see what kind of environment is created in the new covenant. First of all, we have peace with God. It's a peaceful environment. Being justified by faith, we have peace with God. Romans 5.1. That means we can approach to God, see, without fear. We can approach to God fully persuaded that he'll receive us in Christ. This is not the order of the old covenant now. When God came down in a, a limited sort of exposure they had to God, scared the people half to death. They trembled. They asked, well, oh, don't, don't let God talk to us anymore. That's not the experience now in the new covenant. We don't say, we don't want God to, don't be preaching to us about the word of God anymore. Huh? We say more. We sing that song, more about Jesus. It's a different kind of covenant. It has different kind of results. Peace with God. And here's something. There's therefore now no condemnation to them that are in Christ Jesus. Now I can cite to you for myself a hundred reasons very easily why I should be condemned. Probably that's kind of a conservative count, I would say. But see, I know that those things have been forgiven. If they haven't been, as soon as I confess them, they will be. You can go tonight, to bed tonight, 100% clean. Just confess your sin. He's faithful and just to forgive your sin. Cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now, you'll have to do it again tomorrow. I understand that. But thank God you can do it and experience cleansing. No condemnation. See, that wasn't under the law. They didn't, they didn't have that. And you're accepted. I mean, we're talking the courts of the Lord. He's, Ephesians 1, 6 says, He made us accepted in the beloved. So as soon as you're in Christ, we're baptized into Christ. Yeah. As soon as we're in Christ, God makes us acceptable. That's right. And the welcome signs hung out. Welcome. Amen. Come in. Uh -huh. See? That wasn't under the old covenant. Right. And you think of the fellowship that is realized under the new covenant. We are part of some congregation. Amen. Let me tell you that. Yeah. It's kind of detailed in Hebrews, the 12th chapter. Mm -hmm. Verse 22, ye are come. See, uh -huh. <laughs> we say you have, uh -huh. you've arrived. We have come, we are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city, the living God. We're come where, we've come where God is. Yeah. The heavenly Jerusalem to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn. Now, you know, like tonight we're meeting here, but there's more personalities here yeah. than, you can, than you can see, Amen. more than you can imagine. Yes. See, we've come to this vast Amen. assembly of believers and saints that even include holy angels. To the general assembly and church of the firstborn. <laughs> Isn't that good? Yeah. The general assembly. You know, there were times when Israel, they all assembled at one time. Uh -huh. This is an assembly. Well, I'll tell you, when you think about that, spirits aren't limited like men in the flesh are limited. There are spirits here that way back able, yeah, you know. Right. Go <laughs> back to Abel, and Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. See, they're alive. But there's a sense. Yeah. I can't explain it. Uh -huh. it's, beyond, it's beyond explanation, but I can believe it. Amen. They're here. That's right. And the things you'd be ashamed of in their presence, well, you just, you just back off from them. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And the, but there's things that they, they, they'd be telling you, well, I wish we had what you had. But we were the, you have what we were told was coming, and lo and behold, you've you've got it. Yeah. And it's going to become the culmination when we're ever with the Lord. And to uh, the names who's those whose are names are written in heaven. There's a 
There's a log in heaven of everybody that's accepted. Your name, if you're in Christ, your name's in there. And then you've been coming to the fellowship of a lot of other names written in there, and their influence over you is more significant than you may think. I think that they have there's some ways of communication that transcend our imagination. Something the Old Covenant never had. Nobody ever talked to anybody under the Old Covenant about anybody in heaven. It's just, it's just not there. And to, the Spirit, to God the judge of all. Some of you are afraid to think of God the judge of all. We're, this is how uncondemned you are in Christ. This is how uncondemned you are. You could become before God the judge. Yes. <laughs> and it won't condemn you. How's that? This is the benefits of the new, yeah, new covenant. And the spirits of just men made perfect. These are souls that have went on. Uh -huh. I told you this morning, one of my whole colleagues, Brother Kenny Smith, he went this week to be with the Lord. But he's here. Yeah. And to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, we come to him. And he's, he's the one that's making the new covenant effective. See, right. he's by mediating the new covenant, it means he's making sure that what the covenant promises gets to you. You don't have to do something in particular to get these benefits. Yeah. These, if you are in Christ, that's the particular that you got to do. The particular thing you got to do is get into Christ yeah. and then abide in Christ, and Christ will take the benefits of the covenant, mm -hmm. and as you're able, he'll mediate them to you. Yes. And tomorrow he'll do it again. Next year he'll do it again. He'll grow you up with this. Yeah. Old covenant didn't have anything... Uh, like this, and we've come to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. God said to Cain, He says, Look, your brother's blood's crying out to me from the ground. It wasn't crying out justified, <laughs> it was crying out condemnation. But the blood of Christ, mankind killed him, but his blood's crying out justification, Amen. free from sin. Accepted by God, washed away. See? Yeah. Old covenant had nothing like that. Some revealed effects. Here's some revealed effects now of the new covenant. Moses uh, <coughs> said it this way The Lord thy God will raise up unto thee a prophet from the midst of thee, of thy brethren, like unto me, unto him. <laughs> You shall hearken. They yeah, didn't hearken to Moses. Huh? They didn't hearken to Moses. God's going to raise that prophet. You'll listen, you'll listen to him. Now, here's a mark of the new covenant. The people listen to Jesus. They do. You find people not listening to Jesus, they're outside the perimeter of the new covenant. God has not made any kind of salvation that allows people to ignore Jesus. There's no such thing as a salvation that allows that. <coughs> and you've got a lot of things included under the grace of God to assist you in, in listening to Jesus and hearing Jesus. And it is pleasant to listen to Jesus. You'll hear him, he said. Here's another thing. These are results of the new covenant. So where these results are not found, whatever can be said of the people, they're not where they should be. Someone has to be courageous enough to say this. Even if it's us, you, ha you have to be courageous enough to say it. Listen to this. Moses said this, The Lord thy God will circumcise thy heart and the heart of thy seed after thee. Notice what happened. To love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul. The law commanded, Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, with all thy soul. But the people didn't do it. The people didn't do it. But Moses said, God's going to circumcise your heart and you'll do it. You will love God with all your heart. That's what it means to have a circumcised heart. 
that is the flesh is cut away from it so that your fallen nature it does not have dominion over you. It's a connected with your body. You've still got it. But it doesn't have dominion. Sin shall not have dominion over you, for you are not under law but under grace. So as soon as you teach people routines, sin gets dominion. You teach people about Jesus and about what God will do does in Jesus. And people will not even feel obligated to sin. See? Sin won't have dominion over. That's an effect of the new covenant now. They'll love God. Here's another. They will all know the Lord. So here is this vast conglomeration of people. Male and female, bond and free, Jew and Greek. Old and young. Different late stages of growth. But when God speaks, they all can say, it is the Lord. Amen. You remember when little Sam, young Samuel, God appeared to him a dream and said, Samuel, Samuel. He thought Eli was calling him, you remember? And the prophet adds a little explanatory note as to why Samuel didn't know. Uh -huh. He says, Samuel did not know the Lord. Yes. It's, now, he was a young boy. <laughs> he wasn't an old man when he didn't know the Lord. Mm -hmm. He did not know the Lord. Mm -hmm. But Eli helped him. Yes. Amen. He says, the next time mm -hmm. you hear those words, yeah. say, speak, Lord, for thy servant hears. Samuel was one of the great men of Scripture, one of the great men and prophets of Scripture. He, showed, he taught us what it means to know the Lord, to recognize. More than recognize, you're willing. In the day of his power, you're willing. Ezekiel said, here's the result of the new covenant. This is the result of it. Ezekiel 11, 20, he was going to give them a new heart that they may walk in my statutes and keep mine ordinances and do them. <laughs> How do you get people to obey God? To obey is better than sacrifice. Jesus is the author of salvation to them that obey him. So how do you get people to obey God? They got to have a new heart. And when they have a new heart, They'll obey God. That's right. yeah. Now, this is the gospel we have to preach. Yes. Enough of this stuff of Jesus is your buddy and your friend and all this kind of stuff. Enough of that. We need to say he's a savior. He can give you a new heart, yeah. Amen. which will solve yeah. all of your overcoming problems. Yes. Again, Ezekiel 36, 27. I will put my, this is new covenant benefit, I will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and ye shall keep my judgments and do them. Hmm? See, under the law, you ought to keep them and you ought to do them. That's not new covenant theology. New covenant theology is you will keep them and you will do them. Yeah. <laughs> now, I know most of you pretty well. See, you've been doing, you're doing this, but you're doing it because of what God's done. Yes. Uh -huh. It's because of what God's done in you, yeah. and he's done it because of Christ yes. and through Christ mm -hmm. that you are able to do things you couldn't do before. And you might not even have wanted to do them before. Maybe you didn't even know about them before. This is the result now of the new, yeah. new covenant. I'll put my spirit within you <laughs> and cause you. How, this is God. You say, well, God isn't going to make you do something against your will. But God can make you willing in the day of his power. Yeah. Who wants to do something? Who wants to do what's right against their will? This is a law. This is a law mentality. 
God knows you can't really do God's will against your, do God's law against your will. You really can't do it. How long does God have to prove this? But through Israel, 1,500 years of history proves that people who didn't want to do God's will couldn't do it. That's right. Yep. That's been adequately demonstrated. Mm -hmm. So God says, now here's what I'm going to do. Yeah. I'm going to give you a new heart. I'm going to put my spirit in you, and I'm going to cause you. So if you're doing the will of God, don't boast. Make your boast in the Lord. Say, God God has caused me. Someone say, well, God doesn't do things like that. Well, this is what he said he'd do. And here's something else about uh, this is a new covenant. These are results of the new covenant. Malachi spoke it this way. Unto you that fear my name, this Malachi 4, 2. Unto you that fear my name shall the Son of Righteousness arise with healing in his wings, and ye shall go forth and grow up. Yes, amen. <laughs> As calves in a stall in a protected environment. So what, just what is the secret to growth? See, spiritual growth, this is like a big, big, big problem in today's church. Spiritual growth. There's people trying to systematize it and all kind of things. But Jesus, God said, here's what I'm going to do. The son of righteousness shall rise up and he will heal yeah. the human condition. Yeah, that's right. uh -huh. And you'll grow up yes, like calves in a protected stall, yeah. fed with the choice grain. huh? And you're told you'll delight yourself in yeah, fatness. Yeah. And let me, another thing, these are benefits now, results of the new covenant. Where the new covenant is, is working, this is the kind of thing you find. Yeah. Now, where the Spirit of the Lord is, remember, God said, I'm going to put my Spirit in you. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, 2 Corinthians 3.17, yeah. there is liberty. Amen. What kind of liberty? Liberty to occupy the promised land. Liberty to take hold of what God has promised. See? Some years ago, when was it? 88, something like that. I had a debate here in Neosho with a person. And he was a champion of law. And he had a chart, showed the people. This is how God works. He takes a, he takes a cow, and he puts puts a peg down on the ground, and ties a rope or, to the cow, so the cow can eat within the radius of that, however far that rope reaches. And so he was telling us that using an instrument of music was outside the, that perimeter. So what I told him was, he, this is how it really is. God pulls up the pig. He takes off the rope. He gives you a heart, new heart and says, eat as much as you want. No limitations. Let your soul delight itself in fatness. He sets you in heavenly places, and there's nothing up there you can't have. That's liberty. See, that's liberty. Liberty is that you're no longer responsible. That is not what liberty means. It means you're now free to do what God requires of you. Amen. And one more thing. This, these are results now of the new covenant. Second Corinthians 3.18, that whole chapter is about the new covenant as compared to the old covenant. But we all, so this like isn't something for like a chosen elite, we all, with open face, that is, we, we're looking square in the face of Jesus without anything over our face. Beholding as in the glass, the glass is mirror, mirror, is the gospel, which is reflecting Christ to us. The glory of the Lord are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even by the Spirit of the Lord. So as, the, as you behold the gospel of Christ, which is the power of God in his salvation, 
The gospel is the, if I may use the word mechanism, what God uses to deliver you, change you, and bring you at last to heaven. And as you gaze at it, the Holy Spirit changes you. It's an upward change. So you become more and more and more like Christ. That's the result of the new covenant. If you find yourself, and I think most of you are, are in this process, if you're not sure, I could, I could tell you about yourself if you want to know. But You are experiencing a covenantal promise. The Holy Spirit of God, who is under God's management and is working according to God's program, is chipping this off. Chipping that off, and he's molding you. So more and more, you're taking on the likeness of Christ. And the last day, when the final conformity takes place, you will be in your measure conformed to the image of Christ. This is the result of the new covenant. Where this, where this isn't taking place. A serious condition exists. Somebody has got to address that situation. It can't be ignored. And it's in order, I think, to ask God to raise up people that will be able to interpret to people what's hap- what happens in Christ. Because some, some of God's people, it's, some of these things have happened to them, but they don't know what they are. And they give it. They are taught to account for them by some other means than the grace of God, the Spirit of God, Son of God. They're taught to account for it some other way. But I tell you, if you see this, what it does for your heart, and the boldness it gives you, and the confidence it gives you, it can't be compared with anything else. I know, bless God, what it's like to be free. And I am an opponent of things that gender bondage. Mm -hmm. I'll try and be as kind as can because I really, I really want people to see what Jesus has done. But I tell you right now, God wants it more than I do. Uh God wants his people to see, comprehend what Jesus has done to see what happens when your heart's circumcised. What happens when you have the Spirit of God? What happens when you really believe? There are things that really do happen. But if you don't know them, well, that's the benefit is in knowing them. I'll close there, but this is wonderful to consider. The benefits realized under the new covenant which were never realized and could not be realized under the old covenant. The old covenant wasn't for that purpose. The old covenant was to lead us to Christ. It was a schoolmaster to teach us why we needed Christ. And if you listen to the law, it'll, it'll teach you this. You'll say, whoa, whoa, whoa. i got to have help. It'll teach you that. Brother Jeremy has our exhortation tonight.